and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Before I introduce today's guest, I just want to remind you there's just three days left to get a special deal on two of my books. The publisher has bundled them together for a price lower than they would cost you together and free shipping in the United States and many, many bonuses. I'll put a link in the show notes if you're interested. You know, everybody loves a good success story, especially this time of year when people are slipping and sliding and all over the place with their diet. And just yesterday, I was having a conversation with someone in their early 70s saying how hard it was to lose weight and she couldn't do it because, you know, it's so hard when you're older. And listen, it's hard anytime. We get that. But today's guest not only lost over 100 pounds, but she did it at the age of 67 in her late 60s. So if that doesn't inspire you, nothing will. Please welcome to the show, Margie Burton. It's so nice to have you on the show. Thank you, Chef AJ. It's great to be here. Well, I just, I'm so excited about your story because I don't believe it's ever too late for people to have success. And I know that everybody wants to hear how you did it, when you did it, and why you did it. Well, I'd be happy to give you some background first because I um, have dealt with weight loss issues my entire life. And so even as a child, I um, I was known as thunder thighs among my peers. It was very sad. That's um, so but, mean. Isn't it mean? You know, that, that just, I don't get how that's helpful at all to a child, you know? Yeah, it, it can be a problem. But I, you know, sometimes you sort of live up to those nicknames that you get when you're a kid too, unfortunately. Yeah. But anyway, I, um, I was always active, um, played a lot of sports and um, I had a horse, so I did a lot of horseback riding and, and I can remember at one point thinking, okay, I know what my weight is now. And as I look back on it, I'm exactly that same weight now today, many, many years later, uh, as I was a, as a teenager, my senior year of high school, I developed some back problems and ended up having to be bedridden. And I gained quite a bit of weight during that time because I never got out of bed. I stayed in bed the entire time for about three months, went to school on a little box that they plugged into my classroom, which was very um, unusual in those days. So it was kind of fun to think that I went to school on a box. <laughs> but anyway, uh, at the end of the time, when I was able to get out of bed, I discovered, whoa, I didn't fit into any of my clothes. And that was a problem for me. Had what, to get... you, what age were you? I'm sorry to interrupt, but I'm trying to get a timeline here. When you were called Thunder Thighs, what age were you when either you were considered overweight or when you first felt you were overweight? I think probably when I was um, 10. 10. And were other people in your family overweight? Like, did you did you know you were overweight? Because when I look back at some of my pictures, I'm like, I, I wasn't that fat. But, you know, I think we're very hard on ourselves. I think that's true. I think when I was 12, 13, I uh, really felt like I was overweight. You know, people would choose me last for the teams. Um, you know, I, I, I just felt I wasn't um, acceptable as far as uh, my weight. So even though I, yeah, I could get up on a horse and, and ride, there were a lot of other heavy people that rode horses and my horse was big and uh, could handle it, although I wasn't that overweight. But my senior year, I really gained quite, I gained like 40 pounds. And so then I really knew I was overweight. Um, but I, you know, could still walk and hike and I spent some time in the Grand Tetons and um, felt like I could do what I needed to do to get out there and walk, even though I was near the end of the pack when it came to hiking. So it wasn't, it wasn't impacting your life to that great of a deal yet. Is that correct? I think that's true. I think Would you mind if I just took a moment because you know, they're saying a picture is worth a thousand words. Can I just show your astounding before and after? And by the way, Margie was featured on a magazine cover, not once, but twice. She's going to show you, but guys take a look at this before and after, if you don't mind and tell me what you think about that. I mean, that is quite a difference. You're like half the woman you used to be, pretty much. I think it's interesting that I was in the heavy picture. I'm eating cake. I was just thinking the same thing, the same thing. I mean, you've got a fantastic figure. Look at you. I mean, wow, you are just one hot mama. I mean, that is an amazing. I mean, do you keep that photo somewhere like on your refrigerator and your wallet just kind of as a reminder? I probably should. No, I haven't, but I, I probably should to help me. 
keep on track. <laughs> I mean, if, if that doesn't inspire people, I don't know what will of the possibility. So let me stop the share. So you, you've come a long way, baby. I'm curious, what were you, what was the eating habits like in your family? What, what diet were you raised on? Were other people eating the same way? And did other people suffer with excess weight in your family? I don't remember um, my mom as ever really feeling like she was on a diet per se, but I felt like I was on a diet. But for a long time, I'd been on a sea, a, a seafood diet. You see the food, you eat it. And I can remember with my brother, we would compete. You know, my mom would buy the like Oreo cookies and we each would take which, which row was yours and which row was mine. And I can remember seeing him shift some of the cookies to his row thinking that wasn't really fair. And so I started doing that as well. And uh, yeah, I grew up on sugar frosted flakes every day for breakfast. And well, they're great. <laughs> of course. <laughs> if and you want to gain weight. <laughs> yeah. But I remember my mom um, in my older years, my mom would be eating uh, fairly simply. She just have a, a, one of those six ounce yogurts for lunch. And I can remember thinking, oh, that's probably what I should do is just eat one yogurt and have that be my lunch. And then of course I'd be hungry later. And so I'd want another one. And so sometimes I consume several of them in a day, but it was all about limiting what I could eat. And so I, I felt deprived, I think a lot of the time, you know, I would kind of sneak and have a little bit more ice cream or, you know, a little bit more cheese on my whatever. Sometimes I just slice cheese thinking that that would help me feel stronger, that I would have um, more energy if I ate some of those things. And, um, but it was really, I became a teacher and I can remember um, teaching. We only had minutes in between classes to eat our lunch. So I can remember just, you know, eating the yogurt or eating a very small cup of cottage cheese and thinking that's all I had time for. And then after school, I'd want an after school snack. I can remember friends would come in who were thin and they would offer me things like edamame. And I thought, oh, what is this? And I'd never heard of such a snack before. And so I was kind of being introduced to things that were better for me um, subtly um, by my teaching friends, although there were many others who were heavy as well. But my later years, my last year, I was having such trouble health-wise, trouble with my knees. Um, I had to use a walker the last year I taught just to be able to get around from my classroom to the teacher's lounge and out to the playground. And it was a walker with a seat. So it was great. I could go out and watch the kids on the playground. Don't anybody get hurt because I can't get to you if you should fall. But I'm out here on the playground seated in my walker. And uh, yeah, I remember that was kind of sad, but I started having grandchildren by that time. And, and it was one of my grandsons said to me when we were kind of playing and he turned to me and he said, Nana, why are you so fat? Wow. And, I, and that was a real turning point for me because I thought, well, I, I knew that I was heavy. I knew that I was in the doctor's range, morbidly obese, but I'd never really had anybody come out and say, why are you so fat? <laughs> so that was, um, yeah, I, I, I stopped to think about that. I thought maybe I should be trying a little harder to lose some weight. My family members um, didn't really say too much other than that, but it was the innocence of a child. So um, how, how old was the grandson at the time and how old is he now? I think he was probably three, maybe three Did years he, The innocence of the child, is, is he aware that, because that, that might have planted a seed, you know, is he aware that he said that? Is he old enough to know now that? Yeah, he's 23 now. So yeah, maybe I could uh, point out to him that he was the one that really got me thinking. Because the thing is, is he says what other people might be thinking. And I actually had somebody say that to me at a class at Whole Foods. They actually raised their hand when I was cooking. I thought they were going to ask about the recipe. And they said, excuse me, if the vegan's diet is so good, why are you so fat? And it's like, how do you answer that question? You know, so I said, well, I said, I don't know. It must have been something I ate. Because what do you say to that? You know, and how do you explain it to a three-year-old? Right, for sure. But it, it obviously took its toll in, in my thought. Do you remember what you said to him? I just said, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I guess it must be that I eat too much. Mm. And that was good enough for him. We went on to other things. 
But we know now it's not how much we eat that makes us fat or thin. It's what we eat because a lot of us eat a lot more now than when we were heavy. Oh, I eat far more now than I ever did when I was heavy uh, in, in terms of amounts. Yes, for sure. So they, they always talk about, you know, like, like, did you hit rock bottom? Like what made you go from the picture on the left to the picture on the right? Well, I had retired from teaching and uh, I retired before I turned 65. And I can remember when I, I was standing in line at a pharmacy and I knew I had to think, OK, when I turned 65, I was going to get taken off of my husband's health insurance. So I wasn't going to have double coverage anymore. And I thought, you know, somehow I'm going to have to start paying more. But I can remember being in line at a pharmacy and the person in front of me had to pay over three hundred dollars. And it seemed like they picked up very little in the way of prescriptions. And I can remember thinking, oh, my goodness, that's such a huge amount of money. And I thought if I and I was on like 17 um, or 18 prescriptions at the time and a couple of over the counter things. Okay, and I eight, 18 <laughs> prescriptions. That's a lot of medication. What were you on medication for? OK, I was taking a number of pain medications for fibromyalgia, fibromyalgia. I was diagnosed with trigeminal neuralgia and had two medications for that. I'd had cluster migraines and had a problem with that. I was on a couple of pain meds and preventative meds for that. Um, I had uh, IBS. I had um, myofascial pain syndrome. I had I was diagnosed with chronic fatigue. I was on medication for that. Um, trying to think what else. It, were, it just seemed like there were so many things that... Well well, were they helping you any of these medications? I thought they were. I thought they were preventing some of those things from happening because if I didn't take the medications, the pain would get worse or the headaches would come. Once I had, because I had cluster migraines, I'd get sometimes two and three a day. And so I'd have an aura ahead of time and then the pain would come and it was just intense. And sometimes it would last like two weeks before they would stop. And it was very difficult. Anybody who's dealt with with chronic migraines or just even migraines knows the pain is just very intense. So it's hard to function. I can remember I used to take, um, I had uh, shots that I would take with uh, Imitrex in it, which was a prevented or helped to alleviate the pain of the migraine. And I can remember going, um, sending my students out to recess and running over to the sink and throwing up because the pain was so intense. And I remember a student coming back in, you know, are you okay? <laughs> it's like, oh, I'm fine. I just have a headache, it's no problem. <laughs> I sent them out to recess, but I can remember thinking this is just craziness to have things that debilitate you so much. How many med of the 18 medications are you on now? I'm on uh, three medications now. Um, so I do take a, uh, medication to help prevent the migraine still. And I take a medication for the trigeminal neuralgia and I take a medication for thyroid because right. I had my thyroid. Still, you know, get, going from 18 to three is just miraculous. Yeah. Yeah. It made a huge, huge difference to change the way that I ate. Did you um, have any idea at the time that some of what was uh, the reason that you had to be on medication had anything to do with what were you eating a and what, what were you eating? I, I don't think that I ever thought it had anything to do with what I was eating. You know, I thought I was just eating too much or uh, I just couldn't exercise the way I wanted to because I was so heavy. Um, yeah, I had no idea that it was all about what I ate. So that was a whole new thing for me. So I, I made a decision when I would turn 64. I thought, OK, I've moved to a new location. I moved from Southern California to Northern California. I wanted to try and get healthy before I turned 65 because I was worried about the number of medications I was on and all the money I would have to pay um, when I lost that copay of being on my husband's, um, his uh, insurance. And so I thought I'm going to give myself a year. And so I, when I'd had knee replacements the previous year, I'd gone to, uh, for rehabilitation, they send you to their gym and so I went to a gym and that was the first time I'd ever gone to a gym in my entire life. I never had experienced a gym before. So I thought, well, I, I've got a gym right around the corner from where I live. So I'm going to join the gym. So I thought that will be the answer to all my problems. If I just join the gym, exercise, I'll lose the weight and I'll be down. By the time I turn 65, I should be good. So I went to a class 
that was called um, the Healthy Heart class, uh, the Young at Heart, Young at Heart. And there was a very fit 71 year old instructor who was, you know, pushing us. And I can remember lifting these weights thinking, oh my goodness, this is just so heavy. I don't know if I can continue to do this. And she said, you know, I just want to commend you for all of you for being here in this class. You know, get exercising and strengthening your muscles is just the thing to do when you're older. She said, but if any of you are in here to lose weight, this is not the way to do it. And I can remember I perked up kind of at that. I, My hands stopped from, uh, from lifting up the weights one more time. And then she said, um, you know, see me after class if you're interested in losing weight. I... I could barely contain myself. I almost dropped the weights thinking when she said, this is not the way to do it. Because I thought I'm killing myself in here for what? Nothing. So I remember class could hardly end fast enough. I put my weights back and ran over to her. I said, what do I need to do? She said, well, there's two things you need to do. The first thing you need to do is to watch a, a video on Netflix called Forks Over Knives. And so I thought, okay, I've got Netflix. I probably can watch that. And she said, the other thing I need you to do is to go on Amazon and order a book called The Starch Solution. So I thought I can do that. So I ordered this book uh, and got it like the next day. It's amazing what Amazon will do even back then. And I had a friend, I was telling a friend about it. And she said, oh, I've got a copy of Forks Over Knives. Come on over and we'll watch the video. So it was like that afternoon, I went over to her house and we watched the video. There were things on that video I had never, ever heard before. Nobody had ever told me about the dangers to your health in eating certain foods. And I was just so amazed by that. When the book came the next day, I started reading it right away. And I was just amazed that I thought, why haven't I heard these things before? You know, it probably was out there, but I just wasn't interested enough to find out more about it. So it talked about how you should not eat animal products. And I thought, I I thought vegans were like way out there. I thought that was just kind of craziness that I not really looked into, but I thought they were eccentric and I didn't want to be considered eccentric. So I thought I, I've got to be careful here, but I kept reading and saw the things that it did to people's health. And I thought, I'm here to lose weight and to get healthy. So by the next day that I woke up and I said, today, I'm not going to eat any animal products. So that very day, I basically stopped eating a lot of the things that I had in my house. And I thought, I've got to get rid of some of these things. And I thought, okay, I've just got to fix a meal for myself. And I've got to fix a meal for my husband. And uh, I have a sister who's developmentally disabled who lives with us. So I, I fixed the meal for my husband and my sister, and then a meal for myself. And I did that basically for three meals a day um, for for quite a while. And my husband could see that I was kind of struggling a little bit to try and get all these meals prepared. And my sister wants to eat because of her disability. She needs to eat at a certain time. And so, you know, just trying to get everything ready on time. And so I can remember my husband saying to me, you know, Margie, why don't you just fix one meal and we'll just eat the way you do? And I thought, really? Okay. And so I started fixing the one meal for me, for everybody. And my sister was a little concerned and a little upset about that. And we went to her next doctor's appointment and she went in there and she was crying, big crocodile tears, um, and the doctor was like, what's going on? And she said, my sister is making me eat this horrible way. And he turned to me and he said, what are you doing that she's so upset about the food? And I said, well, we're actually switching to a whole food plant-based diet. So we're eating no animal products. And he turned to my sister and he said, you know, Helen, I want to tell you something. I have a patient who had stage four cancer. She didn't know what that meant. So we just explained, you know, he was going to die very soon from, from his cancer. And, and the doctor said, he changed the way that he ate 
to the way you're eating now. And that was seven years ago. And, and Helen sort of stopped crying. And he said, as she said, do you mean I need to eat the way she's telling me to eat? And he said, if you eat that way, you'd be much healthier. So Helen instantly stopped the crying. She said, okay, I'll do it. And, and she has. And she had type 2 diabetes at the time. And eating a whole food plant-based diet basically cured her type 2 diabetes. And I never really had heard anybody talking about curing type 2 diabetes before. And so I found it very intriguing. I went to a number of, um, oh, I continued to get mentored by my vegan mentor, Linda Middlesworth, who was my uh, instructor. And she the- is watching now, and so is Esther Loveridge, just so you know. Well, Esther Loveridge, for those of you who know her, came to the class about a year after I had kind of got my weight down and was in the class. And she was quite heavy at the time, but she came to the same gym class with Linda Middlesworth. And uh, I can remember her thinking uh, or even voicing, you know, I, I don't know if I can do this, you know, because just getting up and down off the floor was a struggle for, for many of those in the class who were heavier. And I remember it was difficult for Esther too. And so, um, but I tried to encourage her, Esther, you know, keep going, you can do this. Because by then I had gotten my weight down and um, felt much better. And, uh, but I, I remember going to Linda saying, Linda, I, I, everywhere I go, people are eating things that I shouldn't eat. What do you do? She said, oh, well, you just bring your bag of potatoes with you. So I carry a baggie of potatoes with me, like this one. This is um, my, my bag of um, air fried potatoes. And I just have it with me. So anytime I see anything that tempts me, I just whip out my potatoes and just start eating a potato or two. And I feel so much better and feel like this was delicious. I didn't need to be tempted by anything. So that was a a tip that Linda had guided me on. And um, yeah, I would never went anywhere without my potatoes. (laughs) We always call it, we used to call it an ultimate weight loss and it feel fabulous pimping it, P-I-M-P, potato in my purse, and often joke that they should design purses with a special pocket in them for our potatoes that would actually keep them warm. Oh, I got so I would eat them cold and warm, however they came, and it was fine with me. So you lost 105 pounds. How long did it take you to do it? And I, I lost about 85 pounds um, pretty quickly. Um, I lost like over 10 pounds the first week. And then I lost about uh, two tenths of a pound a day after that. So I was losing about two and a half pounds a week. And it took me uh, approximately seven months to get down to where I felt like, whoa, I really need to make sure I get a new wardrobe. And um Probably by the time I was uh, eight or nine months along, I felt like I I lost that 85 pounds. I reached that plateau and I stayed there for quite a long time. I can remember watching you, Chef AJ, giving a presentation on if you want to lose a little more weight, um, start your day with, uh, you know, veggies Veggies for breakfast. Yeah. So I started cooking more um, Brussels sprouts and, and, would eat, you know, a big bowl of those for breakfast. Um, And sometimes I would have a little oatmeal after that. Sometimes I didn't need anything more after that. And um, and then uh, Esther had gotten her weight down quite a bit by this time. And she was very encouraging. And the fact that she started her her, um, blog and her informational site, Esther's Nutritional Journey, uh, I think, and the fact that she got her donuts to potatoes book going i think all of those things were wonderful because i could then look because esther would post every day every meal that she ate she always made it look so beautiful she still does it makes her plate look so beautiful i can remember thinking my plates aren't beautiful but um once in a while i'd take a picture of it thinking okay it looks nice but you know i was just happy to eat and the fact that i could eat so much i think was amazing to me I never really um, worried about amounts anymore because I can remember my, it just seemed like for so much of my life, I basically had to deprive myself, eat less, eat less, eat less. And I can remember going to um, 
Coach Rubin, who gave a number of um, slideshows, PowerPoint presentations that were so informative for me as I was learning more. I, I, I just wanted to grasp as much as I could from as many different people as I could. And I can remember him saying, you know, you need to eat enough. So just eat until you're full. And I thought, am I ever full? I don't know if I'm ever full, <laughs> you know, but if I'm eating the, the right things, then I, it should be okay. So I can remember thinking, you know, I wish that others would consider uh, trying a plant-based diet because it just is so, so great and for your health. I, it just frustrates me when people say to me, oh, I could never eat the way you do. And I think, well, you know, do you want to be healthier? Do you want to uh, feel better? I can remember being at the playground with one of my grandchildren and he started to fall off the slide and I got up from where I was and I ran over there and was able to avert a disaster. But I can remember after that thinking, I just ran. I was so surprised at myself that I had done that because I hadn't been able to run for a long, long time. And then I began to volunteer at an equestrian center nearby uh, that caters to the disabled. And so I, I get horses ready for the lessons and then lead horses during the lessons, uh, a place called Project Ride. And it just is so great because I get lots of exercise. But when the horses need to trot, I, of course, leading the horse, need to run. And so I thought, I, I'm getting better at running so I can run farther and farther. So now I'm 60, I'm 72 now. And so it's been a number of years and I've never found a way of eating that's sustaining as well. You know, I don't, I'm not yo-yo dieting like I did for so many years. Although I probably need to a little bit get some vegetables for my breakfast because I just finished your healthy desserts uh, yeah. class. And <laughs> I found myself thinking, okay, I, I this is delicious. It's not quite at the point where, you know, I would want to tweak a few things before I would want to give it to anybody else. So my husband and sister and I are just eating those things, which oh. I need to reach a point. Okay, where I so to we're going to have, a, on, on December 31st, I'm going to have a, a, a an impromptu live hangout. Which we're going to call it the hangout throwout. Everybody throw out all your stuff on Chris on New Year's Eve, you know? That's probably a good idea. I did end up throwing a few things out. But anyway, um, I think within reason, you know, I don't normally make desserts like that. Um, we were giving us so many great recipes. I wanted to try them all. But anyway, I, I think within reason, you know, I, I went to um, Dr. McDougall's initially when he talked about the 70% of your plate needs to be, you know, grains and 20% vegetables and 10% fruits. I kind of followed that for quite a while. And then I got down to maybe, you know, 60% were my good starches and, you know, more a, a greater percent were my vegetables. And fruits were always what I had in between. And I found that made a huge difference for me in being able to maintain and keep my weight. So I, I did lose a little bit more weight, lost, um, got down to, uh, you know, losing another 30 pounds or so and got over 100 pounds of my weight loss and just felt like, this is great. I'm I'm so happy about it. I, I did have a problem because my things that health-wise started coming back to haunt me. So I had, um, during COVID, I had some foot surgery and they discovered that my heart had developed a flutter. So I had to go in and get a procedure where they stop your heart and start it again. And oh. then that flutter disappeared. But I can remember seeing uh, a heart specialist who I knew was plant-based, Dr. Mosquita, in the hallway at the hospital. And I pulled him aside and I said, you know, I've been eating this way for seven years um, eight years almost. And why does this happen? Why does the heart do crazy things? And he said, okay. And so when did you start? And I told him when I was 64, he said, okay, remember for 64 years of your life, you were eating a sad standard American diet. And he said that may have taken its toll after all those years. So I thought, okay, I have to understand, be understanding that those kinds of things happen. And you know, even though I'm eating well now. So there may be things in our older years, if we start this way of eating in our older years, which is what I feel like I did, 
you know, there may still be some repercussions along the way with something coming back to, to bite us from all the years of eating poorly. But for the most part, my health is so much better. I, my doctor is surprised to see me when I go in for a physical once a year, just because, you know, I feel like I need to check my levels of my blood work and so on. My blood work is always perfect. My cholesterol is always great. My, my weight is good. My, all my, yeah, all my levels, my A1C, everything is at a good level. So my doctor just feels like, you know, just keep doing what you're doing. <laughs> and so, yeah, it's always very rewarding to feel that there are many people my age or friends that I have whose health is not very good. And I think I don't, I'm not sure what to do to encourage them, except to encourage them to try to eat the way I'm eating. The one regret I have is that I wish that I had started 40 so, years ago. Yeah. You know, Neil Marty, they say you should never ask anyone, or especially a woman, her age or her weight. But can I ask you how old you are now? So I'm 72 now. So I'll be 73 on my next birthday. And yeah, I, I feel better, much better than I was in my 50s. And I'm sure better than I, what I felt in my 40s. I think I can do more physically than I could back then. So, and I attribute it all to this um, yeah. eating plants. Yeah. You know, I, so I so it's, been, it's been about five years for you. First of all, before I forget, can I just give your husband a big kiss? I mean, what kind of man is that that just says, okay, I'll just eat this way. It'll be easier for you. I mean, this is what I've seen is that, is that it, they're often the reason that the woman can't do it because they're so resistant. Right. I, I do appreciate his support in that way. Now he does, he's not a hundred percent compliant, um, but he does sometimes get sick. So he got sick not too long ago and. Oh no, she froze. Uh, uh, you, you froze for a second. You, you so, froze. You froze right after you said he got sick. That was when I was well, oh, sad. He got a, a bad cough. There's a cough going around. And so I up my intake of sprouts. I do believe in the benefits of sprouts. So I sprout mung beans and I sprout broccoli seeds. And so I consume a lot of those because I, I always worry that particularly if it's my husband that's sick, that I'm going to get sick too. But no, I consume the sprouts uh, at a larger percentage than usual. And I feel like that really helps me. It's eating plants that really keeps me healthy. So my sister used to get sick for three months of the year. Every winter, she would be sick, bronchitis, pneumonia. I mean, pretty seriously sick so that she didn't get better for months and months. Now, if she gets a cold, it's maybe about four or five days. And then it's then it's gone. So I, I really feel like eating this way helps with your health. So I, I remember I used to teach the Dairy Council's um, program and where we taught the food pyramid and healthy eating for third graders. And I look back now and I just wish that I'd known the truth a little better and had taught them a little bit better about the best way to eat. So yeah, I do I do wish that I'd known sooner or that I'd listened sooner. I guess the information was out there. Um, and I do love animals. And I can remember as a child, when I would work at the barn um, where my horse was boarded, they would often uh, slaughter a cow or you know slaughter animals. And I can remember I just would cry thinking this is just so sad. But of course, every time I was consuming a burger or uh, anything, a steak, any of those things, you know, somebody had to kill an animal. Uh, maybe it wasn't me. And so I, I remember I, I, when I was in college, I took a, a survival course. And we had to basically eat off the land and we covered a lot of territory um, walking. And I can remember eating, we would cook up uh, wild onions and We'd cook up mice that we were able to catch. And I can remember thinking, you know, the mice were greasy and full of little bones. And I can remember thinking, you know, I, I feel like I'm eating because I have to survive. But I wish that I didn't have to eat the animals. So now that I've gone without eating animals for a longer period of time, 
of course, I, I feel more for the animals. I can, it's hard for me to kill. I can't kill a spider or a cockroach or I have to call my husband if we find those things around. You know, I, I, I can't kill the, even the, the critters. Well, that... you know, what we do is we don't kill them. We relocate them. We have two of these things in different areas of our house called bugzookas. And you just, you suction them up and then you can bring them outside without harming them. It's really cool. That's great. That's what we'll have to do. Yeah. So it's been purchase them and then takes them outside. <laughs> yep. It's been five years now. Did your did your husband uh, receive any benefits from eating mostly plant based? Well, let me just say that the magazine, you know, started when I was sixty seven because it took me from sixty five to sixty seven those two more years to lose that extra weight because I'd lost the eighty five pounds. So to lose the hundred five pounds, so it makes it sound like I started it age 67, but I know I started at age 64. So it's been uh, almost, it'll be um, 10 years this next spring uh, that I would have started the diet. So I've been on this diet for quite a bit longer. Well, wait a minute. I'm confused. If you're 72. Okay. I'm 72. I, I thought it was, and well, I'll why be, we, okay. So you started at 62? No, no. I started at 64. So 64. it's been eight years. It'll be okay. eight years next spring. Yeah. Okay, but what we're saying that you lost all your weight at 67. Okay, got it. Right, so I was over 100 pounds at 67. Wow, amazing. So um, do you still just make one meal now for your husband and your sister and you? Yes, yes. Well, no, actually, that's not true. I do try to cater to my sister a little bit. And she has a thing. She has uh, autism, and so she has a thing about three. So with her rice bowl for lunch, she has three vegetables with it. So sometimes I'll just eat the vegetables and my potatoes. So um, so I do fix separate things for her. She likes three vegetables on her salad for dinner. So I'll, you know, I do cater a little bit to her. But but, but she is eating 100% plant-based and she did reverse her diabetes, correct? Yes, absolutely. In fact, a number of years ago, the doctor said, I'm going to remove uh, the diabetes from your record because as long as you eat this way, yeah, you're not going to have any problem with it. Because so, in, in the links you sent me, there was a link to, they, they did a story about her too. They did. Yep. She's. Uh, I mean, this is. She, just she's, she always tells. Of the way we eat. Yeah. If she weren't a little bit under the weather with the cold right now, I'd, I'd have her come and join me because. Yeah. It's just cute to see how excited she gets. I maybe love what she, Margie fixes for me. Just, maybe she could come on another time. That could be. That could be. She's yeah. kind of fun. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I know you have children on and, you know, she looks like a little old lady, but she's yeah, very childlike in her responses. So it, it is fun. Oh, but she love. does. Yeah, she does love eating this way. She tells everybody, I love everything Margie fixes for me. Of course, I always try to fix things that she likes. She was um, disappointed in the beginning because she really loved bacon cheeseburgers. That was a very uh -huh. good thing. So <gasps> we would indulge now and then and get her a bacon cheeseburger. But when we went uh, plant-based, I thought, okay, I've got to fix something that looks a little bit like, you know, a burger that she can be happy with. So I found a, a plant-based burger that I make with uh, black beans and brown rice. And I had some oatmeal and some salsa and I mix it together and I, form it into patties and just fry that or don't no, fry it. I just, you know, cook it on each side and it looks very much like a regular burger. Then she covers the top of it with mustard and that's her, you know, her, what makes it look like cheese on top. And, and she just loves it. She, if she could have that with air fried sweet potatoes uh, for fries every day, she would be very happy. She just loves that. So I try to, that was the, meal for Christmas that she really wanted. So and then I tried your your vegan loaf uh, as well. And that was a big hit too. Oh my God. That this is incredible that people not only can change but really actually love the food. Did was she overweight and did she lose weight also when she went on the plant-based diet? Yes, she lost over hundred pounds. She still has um kind of a big middle um around her tummy, but her legs are very, very thin. Her arms are very thin. Um, oh, I didn't hear the number. How much weight did she lose? So she lost, let's see, six. She lost about 90, 
90. Still, but, but even so, I mean, she re the main thing here, she reversed her diabetes. Was she on medication for it before? Yes, she was taking three medications for her diabetes and she was able to cut them all out totally. This is, I mean, we got to have her on. This is, this is an, and maybe you could show some of the food you make for her. This is incredible. So your husband is, sounds very supportive, but yet he's not a hundred percent. So, so does he have his indiscretions outside of the house? Yes, he does. He'll go out with friends to lunch. That is so, lunch. I love this. I've never met him, but I love him. I mean, the fact that he respects the clean environment. We talk about this all the time. I just love this man. Yeah, he's great about not bringing anything in. So, Do you think that's important for, for your continued success and your sister oh, and yeah. people in general to have? Because we talk about this all the time. For It's in your house. It's in your mouth. Yes, it's very, very true. So we make sure that we don't have it. Um, he does consume bread and Helen and I do not have any bread at all. We don't. That's something we, I yeah. just let her know that we try to stay away from yeah. that. You know, I didn't have bread for 12 years, but now they have this pacha bread and I don't eat it obsessively like once or twice a week. I don't know if you're familiar with it. They sell it in the freezer section of Whole Food. I had the inventor on the show and it's basically just buckwheat, water, and salt. So it's not like a light, fluffy bread. It's more like you have to toast it, but and it's very, very thin. But but I get you. I mean, I you know, I, it can be a very slippery slope bread. It's yeah, for me, bread is uh, is yeah one of those slopes yeah, I don't want to go on, and I yeah. and it's the same way. Well, I mean, you I didn't I didn't know you before, but you look amazing, and soon you have to show the both magazines and maybe some of the inside photos as well. But I'm really curious what your friends and family have to say or what they have said about your transformation because it's quite astounding. Well, I think I think my children particularly are are very pleased. Um I have two daughters that pretty much eat plant-based. I met one of them, Amy. Yes. Yes. She was in the Amy. dessert master class with little Luca and Clara who are going to be on the show Sunday. Yeah. So Amy, I think um she had to change because she developed autoimmune problems. And so she used Dr. Brooke Goldner as her guru, and she began just eating uh, nothing but uh, raw vegetables. So she would fix a big, um, big, huge bowl of raw vegetables, and she would have that for breakfast, for lunch, for dinner. That became her um, go-to, and she would have that. I mean, she still does to this day. It took about three years for her... Um, levels blood work to um kind of become normal but it, she was just so excited because it hadn't been normal for i don't know 12 15 years a long long time and so she she didn't get discouraged you know i i was worried about it because eating the same thing for breakfast lunch and dinner all day long i thought this was going to get tiring for her and i'm sure it does but she continues to to eat that way and continues to feel better all the time. So it really, once in a while when stress, she's a teacher, so when stress at work gets to her, sometimes her levels change a little bit, but she knows yeah. how to be able to use her yoga and meditation and other things to help her as well as the food. And then my other daughter, um, Heather, she's come to a number of uh, presentations that you have given. And um, she also lived for a while in Northern California when Linda Middlesworth had her her workshops, her um, conferences. And so we would come and hear special speakers. And um, she always has been concerned about her weight. She's very, very tall, but she's very thin. So she does her best to continue to monitor her weight and looks amazing. She's always feeling like she's never thin enough, but she is just gorgeous. Yeah. Well, well, you're gorgeous. And I'm curious, uh, did anybody in your family change their diet after seeing your transformation? Two of the daughters did. Two of the girls changed their way of eating. But, but and how many other kids are there? So I have a, a son who's a physician, and then I have three stepchildren. And the son who's a physician is, um, I think he's still he's very proud of me. I, I know that. And uh, he feels that my sister is no longer diabetic because she lost the weight. Right. But she lost the weight eating a plant-based diet. No, 
And she continues to eat a plant-based diet. Right. I'm not sure he's convinced of that, but I know in medical school, they don't get a lot of training nutritionally. And it's only when doctors are willing to do the extra research to find out more about it. Is he willing to read a book by Dr. Greger or Dr. Campbell? I don't know. I gave him some books and I'm not sure that he um, wanted to look into that at that time. But, you know, he'll be retiring from the military pretty soon, a few more years. And maybe he'll take the time at that time to read through them. So he doesn't practice up here. No, he he is very health conscious, tries to maintain his health and his weight and so on. But uh, I'm not sure that he is at a point where he wants to go plant-based. I know his, his, um, his wife's parents did for a while. They were trying to do it, but I think it, people feel like it's just too difficult for them. So I don't know, you know, we, we have choices about what we put in our body and food becomes such a personal thing. People uh, become just tied to their, their food habits and they want to hang on to them. So when people say, I could never eat the way that you do. And I think, well, what, why do you want to stay with your health or your weight at where it is currently? You know, they think, well, I'm going to try this. and I'm going to try that. And I think, you know, feel free. But if you ever want to know more about the plant-based way of eating, you know where to find me. <laughs> what, what diets had you tried throughout your first 64 years? before becoming plant-based and were they successful and to what degree? Okay. I, I tried the grapefruit diet, Weight Watchers, um, Jenny Craig, Nutrisystem. Um, I'm trying to think what else. Um, Keto. I tried that when it was called something else, Dr. Atkins, the Atkins diet. Um, and all of them helped me to lose weight to a certain extent. But then when I stopped eating the food on their plan or stopped really measuring and weighing food and eating the way that they said to do it, when I started trying to get back to normal, what I thought was normal, um, the weight would all come back on. So I can remember getting down to a size 12 thinking, you know, I, I, I'm fairly large boned. I, you know, have bigger hands than most people. And I you know, wear a size 12 shoe. And uh, I was 5'9 until I started shrinking and not standing up so straight. But um, so I always felt like I'm, I just have big bones. I'm just a big, big person. So I thought, you know, getting down to size 12 was probably amazing. But then when I ate this way and found, I mean, I, I'm not super thin. Nobody would say I'm, I'm really, really thin, but to wear my size six, which for me, being a fairly large person, I'm happy with, you know, I think I, I never thought I would ever get to be that size ever in my life. You know, wow. I thought when I got down to 12, I was doing great, you know, but I, that, you know, I said the same thing. Cause I started at a 16 and I don't know what I am because I, I just, I close at Costco. They're like small, medium, large, but I, you know, when I went from a 16 to a 10 and I was not even as, slender as I am now, I thought like, this is great. You know, I can, so it, it's amazing. And uh, I was what, like a 26. I mean, I, I yeah, got by 26. Wow. So, yeah. What grade did you teach as a teacher? So I taught, I started it at, I taught pre-K for a number of years. And then I went to third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade, and ended at sixth grade. So I feel like I graduated from third grade and slowly made my way up to sixth grade. My and favorite was fifth grade. I loved fifth grade because I loved U.S. history. That was at a time when we could do that. We could teach history and science. And, you know, they go through um, different revolutions where, you know, something becomes more important. It used to be then for a while, just teach math and English. Just teach people how to read and teach them how to do math. And those became the core subjects and they kind of let history and science and um, and PE kind of go by the wayside. But now they're getting back into those things. And of course, I felt I, I'm a self-taught artist. So I I like doing portraits of animals, which I do now. And oh, well, yeah, you got to come back and show that. Did you teach up here and have you run into any of your students? Would they even recognize you? 
Yeah, I don't know that they would necessarily recognize me. Um, I don't. I have never taught in Northern California, just in Southern oh, California. I see. So, yeah. could you please? You know, we should have done this sooner because some people tuned in late and didn't see the big before and after that we had on the screen. Could you show the two magazine covers and also the sure. inside? Sure. So this is one of them. So you can see this is the insert of me eating the cake. <laughs> and the other one, this came out during uh, COVID. And so, you know, many of my friends, I'd say, did you see the magazine? Did you get to the store? And it was like everybody was wearing masks. And, you know, I'd, I'd hold this up to somebody and I'd say, does this look like me? And they'd say, no, that doesn't look like you. <laughs> and I think, Oh, well, pretend I have my glasses on. It really is me. And they would say, really? Wow. They thought that was just amazing. So it was pretty, pretty fun. This one had, um, you know, a big centerfold. Um, Who knew that you and Esther Loveridge at age of 70s would become centerfold models? I know. It was thanks to, to Esther that I ever even got in. So this is the one side, and here's the other side. They, I guess you can't really see that too well. They yeah, you're on a virtual screen, but they but that's put their amazing. own. They put their. They asked me what I like, and so I told them I I do make uh, cookies with chickpeas and dates, and so they came up with a recipe themselves. They didn't ask me for my recipes, and the same thing with the plant based burgers that Helen loves so much. And they came up with their own recipes. So when I tried, and people would say, I tried the recipes in the magazine and they weren't very good. <laughs> I say, oh, you want mine? I'll give you my recipe. So then they'd try my recipe and, and it, they liked it much better. So yeah, it's interesting that the magazine has their own, you know, their own dietitians and so yeah. on. But I was just surprised that they were anxious to, to put in there. I consider myself a, a McDougler you know, uh, because I started with the starch solution. Have you taught, has, does, does Dr. John McDougall know about you? Have you ever spoken to him? No, I have not. I'm well, not. Why don't you come meet him sometime? You know, I should do that. He, he hasn't actually come to one of our conferences that we've had well, up here. You know, I happen to but, know him and he happens to be on the show Monday. You want to come and say hi and thank him? I could do that. I could do that because it really, uh, yeah, he made all the difference for me. It right. just changed well, well, my life dramatically. You think your sister will be better by then? Because he kind of made a difference for her too. <laughs> That's true. That's true. She should be better by then for sure. Okay. Yeah. I'll ask him. I won't tell him who it is, but I'll ask him if he can take time at the beginning of the hour on New Year's Day for you to thank him for your success. And of course, Linda Middlesworth, because, you know, if you really? had her, who knows you, if you would have found out about Dr. John McDougall. Yeah, I would not have. I, well, maybe I would hope that somehow... God would make a, a window opening somewhere for me to to change my life because I I do believe it was divine intervention that took me to Linda Middlesworth. Yeah, and, yeah. you hear that, Linda? Linda doesn't even believe in God, so this is hilarious. So thank you, <laughs> Linda. So uh, Beverly and everybody else also wants to know what you eat in a day. Okay, so um, I I did have a lot of dental work done, so I had to have my teeth removed. So I always eat something soft for breakfast. So um, oatmeal or quinoa, um, and then lots of fruit. I eat bananas, and um, sometimes I will make uh, smoothies for myself. And my family laughs at them because they're green smoothies. You know, how can you drink something that's so green? And I, I think that that's okay. So I usually will throw in sweet potatoes and. Um, any grain that I have cooked already, some rice, brown rice. Um, and then I put in um, bok choy and kale and lots and lots of spinach. Um, I put in carrots and then every fruit that I have in the house. So I have kiwi, apple, orange, um, bananas. I eat a lot of bananas, a lot of bananas. I love bananas. They're my sweetener in everything I eat. So... Um, I haven't ever put dates in, but I, then I will whip that up and, and that will be, I know it's not a good idea to consume a lot of your calories, um, having them go through the blender, but, but it's easier for me since I have to eat things soft. I, I was interested in Diana Bananas, 
um, presentation earlier. Uh, so she talked about that because I, when I had to have my teeth pulled, it was during COVID. Oh. So it was great because we could always wear a mask. So all those weeks that I had to go without my teeth, all my, my jaw was healing before I could get teeth. And then everything was delayed because of COVID. You know, the dentist would say, well, things haven't come through yet. So I went such a long time without teeth. Um, but, but anyway, I, I can do better now. But I always, when, if I go to a restaurant and ask for steamed vegetables, ask them to be overcooked so that they're soft and so it's easier for me to eat because there's nothing worse than a broccoli stock that in public you're trying to bite into and you can't quite bite into it but anyway so that's what I usually have for breakfast and then lunch is almost always my potatoes I've really gotten addicted to um, Asian sweet potatoes I can't get the Hannah yams but the Asian sweet potatoes I can get and they're just as sweet and delicious so I usually have those potatoes, and then I'll usually have a vegetable of some sort. I usually keep um, cauliflower, um, broccoli, and Brussels sprouts uh, semi-cooked in, in my refrigerator, so I have them ready at any time. I really love uh, Tammy Kramer nutmeg notebooks, um, batch cooking ideas, and so I do do a lot of that and keep a lot of things that are cooked and ready to eat in my refrigerator. So that's what I usually have for lunch. My sister has a rice bowl with her three veggies and salsa that she heats up for her breakfast. I mean, her lunch, I'm sorry. And then for dinner, we usually have some combination of beans and rice um, fixed in some way, shape or form. Sometimes uh, I'll have a soup. I do love lots of soups. Um, I find cooking, um, there's so much available online. So I think some of our favorite soups, I love tomato soup, I love, um, potato soup, uh, corn chowder. Um, so we have a lot of a lot of soups, black bean soup. Um, trying to make things as simple as possible. But there are basically probably maybe 12 to 15 meals that we rotate through. And I think most people kind of do those things where you have things that your family really likes and that's what you'll, you'll cook for your family. So well, yeah, I mean, I mean think better. about it. Even when people eat not this way, it's they don't eat thirty different breakfasts, thirty different lunches, thirty different dinners. And these people think like there's no variety. Are you eating ninety different meals a month, really? Hey, Margie, just excuse me one second because some people came in late and never saw your before and after. So I want to mm -hmm. share the screen one more time. Okay. Okay, sounds good. Okay, guys, for you late Louis. Click the notification bell so that you won't be tardy. But anyway, here she is before and after 105 pounds lost eating cake. Now she is the cake. <laughs> she is the dessert. Now look at that. I love that picture. You got a great smile in both of them. But the figure on the left, I'm going to send this to Dr. McDougall and ask him uh, if he can come meet him on Monday. All right. Sorry to interrupt, but that my moderators were texting me that people really wanted to see that. Yeah, I agree. So yeah, you you like the white sweet potatoes just like me, right? Yes, I think they're sweeter and they're just so delicious, cold or hot or however they're they so sound good. Hey, do you exercise? Did you exercise? Because you, so, that's how it started. You were actually sent to an exercise class, and what what I mean that's just serendipitous that Linda Middlesworth was the instructor because you could have gotten some keto guy, you know? Yeah, it, it was amazing. That's why I feel like. There was divine intervention there because um, that young at heart class, I, I during COVID, things kind of slowed down and I didn't go to the gym very much. I was worried about things being passed around and people not cleaning machines and equipment. But I was regularly still going to the uh, barn where I would go and work with the horses. And so I got usually each shift, I and it's anywhere between three and five miles that I covered during my shift and walking horses around during the lessons. Um, but the strength training, I uh, up until recently, my gym had a, a gravity machine, which was one where you use your own weight to, to help um, get you stronger. And my gym has decided to discontinue the gravity machines. So I'm still, I'm kind of at a, in an in-between stage right now where I'm looking for something that will help me. I use um, bands at home that I just, you know, wrap around the door frame and 
um, to strengthen my muscles, but I need to get something a little bit more consistent. Do you ever do you ever take Linda's class? Her, her class is a little farther away. She doesn't come to my gym anymore. I wish she did. Um, if she did, I would be right there taking it. Um, but yeah, she's a, an amazing inspiration. Uh, there's somebody else who's getting close to 80 who works at the barn who's uh, an amazing inspiration to me too. So my goal is to continue, yeah, either with that exercise class or helping with the horses at the barn until I'm 80. So I have a few more years to do that, but that's my goal is to continue to be able to do that. That is, you know, I didn't know you. I mean, I mean, I obviously didn't know you until I met you, but that you were so local. We did meet at one of the conferences, but you, are you so busy you can't come to any of our events? I mean, we had like three meetups this week. Yeah, I really should do that. I, um, yeah, I, I'm busy trying to help a lot of people. Um, and I think through my church, I get opportunities to serve and, and particularly during the holidays or around that time, it seems like a lot of people have a lot of needs. So I try to be there for them, but, um, yeah, I need to do that. I remember a number of years ago, um, asking you in particular, I said, you know, I've been at this for a number of years and I still in my head see myself as being heavy. And I'm always so surprised if I see myself in a mirror somewhere or a reflection in the glass and think, whoa, that's me. And it just amazes me. So I asked you, I said, how long does it take before you can convince your brain that you truly have lost the weight and that this is something that your body needs to accept? And you said, oh, it takes about five years. It does. I think so. Cause I, I mean, I know I'm skinny now, but like it does because you're so used to, you know, but, but you know, you're, you're slender now, right? Right. I mean, it still Good. surprises me, but I, I don't think of myself as being really heavy anymore. Yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, when I tell people that I used to be really heavy, they kind of go, oh, yeah, right. And I go, no, no, I really was. I know and, it's, it's hard. Uh, I mean, it, It's, uh, isn't that great? Aren't you happier now? I mean, just because you feel better in your body. It's not about just how you look, but don't you feel better in your body? oh, so much better. I can jump out of bed. I remember when I was really suffering from my fibromyalgia, I remember... Um, kind of being curled up in a fetal position in my bed, not being able to get up to go to the bathroom because it hurt so much. I can remember thinking, I don't know if I can even do this and just crying to be able to put my feet on the floor and get my body up. And uh, yeah, I, I don't have that trouble at all now. It's not a problem at all. So I, I don't have any symptoms of my fibromyalgia, which is just great. I have That no is fantastic. symptoms of chronic You know, Yeah. this is such a great time of year for this story because so many people are, you know, in the pleasure trap and they've fallen off the turnip truck or whatever you want to call it. So what do you say to people that have given up hope that they could have your kind of success or even lose any weight? Well, I think they need to understand that it took them a long time to get where they are now, and it's not going to come off overnight. So give themselves some time. So I think patience is a really important aspect. Be patient with yourself through your learning process. But just remind yourself that you can do this. It's all about choice. And if you make the choice to decide that you want to become thinner and healthier, then, then know that you're worth it. That anybody trying to tempt you with something, you can say no thank you and remember to push it away. and take something on that you know is good for you. So that's why make sure you've got things like your baggie of potatoes handy um, in your purse so that if anybody comes and says, well, you know, there's donuts in the lounge or, you know, I just made some homemade cookies and they're really soft and chewy and warm and delicious. And I think, you know, I, I remember what those taste like. I remember, but I don't need to indulge. So I think you just need to be strong. It does take a certain amount of strength to be able to say no, but you can substitute something that's good for yourself and know that you are worth it. That is just so beautiful. It's almost like a perfect place to end. But I, I just have to ask another question because, you know, it's always interesting to me 
the why of when people finally decide to do it. And, you know, for Esther Loveridge, it was really like about wanting to travel, you know, like her, her weight was impeding her. But for you, it was really like you were just kind of trying to save a bit of money, weren't you? <laughs> yes. I was more worried about what I was going to have to pay at the, at the pharmacy. Um, yeah, my prescriptions and we're trying to adjust to being on a retirement income versus our regular working income, uh, which did revise things a little bit in our budget. So I think those, yeah, it, it was about money, I think, more than anything. But as I got into it and realized, whoa, no, it's much more about health. It's much more about the animals. It's much, it, it's a much, there's a much bigger picture than just uh, the monetary aspect. Well, I, you know, I, my goal or my dream is to meet you in the new year at one of our events, especially the one on the 21st of January, because Esther's husband, Ben, plays in a band called the Party Boys, and we have it at a school. And it would just be so wonderful if you and your sister and maybe your husband could come and, and Amy, I would love to have your family at one of the events that we host. Well, thank you. I will try and set that as a goal and see if we can make it happen. Oh my gosh, because I've been here almost two years now. It's taken you so long to get in touch with me or me get in touch with you. I was so happy to see you in my class. Well, thank you. I enjoyed the class tremendously. And those things do make a big difference. And I, as soon as we get off, I'm going to email Dr. McDougal and ask if it's okay if you come and give him a little, he, well, he loves accolades. So, you know, why would he say no? And and if your sister's better, she can come then, or she could just have her own episode. It would be fun, not just to meet her and hear her story, but maybe you could even like not necessarily, yeah, maybe do a cooking demo because people are saying, what were your recipes that the magazine published incorrectly? Because people would love to know what those recipes are. Yeah, I had thought about that before. I wanted to do my my uh, potato soup with the Instant Pot. I thought if AJ, Chef AJ ever asked me, you know, that's, that would be one of my first ones that I would well, come up maybe with. Maybe you could come back with like a like a joint episode with Helen telling her story and you showing the food. You know, when you were talking about your dental thing, I kept thinking the soup that I eat almost every day, you could probably eat. It's the True North Ramses Bravo soup where you just take the Yukon Golds and the zucchini and it's like amazing. Oh, it sounds great. I, I don't think I had that recipe. I'll okay. Well, I did a whole episode about it, but it's just, I'll show you because I just made it yesterday. Um, I, I, I tweaked it to my likings and there's no seasoning in it. I mean, you could season it, but I, I, you know, at True North, there's like after you're fasting, there's no seasoning in the food and it's still delicious. So I just buy the 1.5 pound bag just because I don't like to have to measure anything, but you know how they have like either creamer potatoes or fingerlings or Yukon golds. And it comes in a 1.5 pound bag, right? It's just easier for me to just get that size. And then I get the zucchini, which like at Trader Joe's, it, I don't know, it's probably like two pounds. There's like three big ones, four cups of water. And I can it fit in my baby instant pot, the three quart and five minutes on high pressure. And then I take my stick blender and it makes 13 cups of soup. And if anybody wants to know, it's 57 calories a cup. It's like one of the best things you can do because it fills you up and it warms you up. And of course you can add things, but it, it's just so great. It's what they feed to patients when they're refeeding, you know, especially when they have sensitive guts, you know? That's great. I, I probably need something else to be putting into my three quart instant pot. I have a three quart and two six quarts and yeah. keep them going most of the time except the three quart I only use really when I'm traveling yeah that's uh, what I got it for but it does and into into uh and to uh steam my husband's greens in the morning but it does work for that recipe well you are just a joy to get to know you're very very inspirational and I I hope you'll come on again soon and maybe even as soon as Monday you never know thank you that would be fun I appreciate do you, it do you enjoy California balsamic vinegar I do Good, because just for being on this show, you get two free bottles in the flavor of your choice. And so tell Helen, if she comes on, that's another two bottles for the uh, for the family. <laughs> that would be great. We go through it a lot. So thank I'm you. so glad. Well, thank you so much, uh, Margie. This has just been a really, really fun and inspiring story. Thank you for this opportunity. I oh, wish you it, a happy new year. That's Happy New Year to you. The pleasure was mine. And thanks to all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. I sure hope you'll come back tomorrow for another different type of inspiring story. We have Dr. Isabel Amigas, and she is a stage four survivor of cancer. And she is going to tell you about the role of nutrition in cancer. Thanks again, Margie. Take care. Thank you.